Reddit, it's Jim and Andrew, and uh, we're here at Direct Relief International, and we are going to answer the top 10 questions from the Ask Direct Relief Anything uh, questions that uh, came up on Reddit. And so we'll just go ahead and begin. Uh, so number 10, SB Lynn asks, uh, how do charitable organizations work together? Uh, is there some charity mastermind who prioritizes which items and goods are sent in? I'm thinking a logistical nightmare. Uh, so Andrew, why don't you answer that? Well, I think there's really two ways that this is done. One is that uh, organizations that are responding to this emergency are constantly in touch with one another, particularly those that are in the same sector, like water, health, uh, those things. But there, to the degree there's, there's no charity mastermind, but there is the UN cluster system, uh, which is divided up by sector, that does actually coordinate all of the assistance that's flowing into Haiti for this process. Um, so the UN is... Yeah. The and uh, we're participating in the UN Health Cluster, uh, which is uh, based down in, uh, in Haiti right now. And we'll provide, uh, we'll provide some links below this video, uh, just linking out so you can see kind of what all the clusters are and, and how they function. So number nine, uh, Cartola asks, what else have you guys been involved with uh, or are currently involved in? Well, we are involved in 72 countries, uh, including the United States, which is actually our fastest growing area of work in the world. Um, and in those countries, uh, you know, we've been involved in many of them going back 60 years. So we have uh, extensive relationships uh, across the entire world. Yeah, if you go on to uh, directrelief.org, uh, there are two tabs. There's the international and the United States there. Uh, so you can see all the things that we're doing around the globe and maybe just around the corner from you. So number eight, uh, dihydrogen monoxide asks, one, how much do you folks read it? Two, have you ever used the donation boxes? Uh, I think they actually mean uh, the wrap pallets that are out in our warehouse. Uh, for extracurricular purposes, like building a castle. Three, want to hire me? Uh, so I will take this one. Um, I'm actually probably the biggest Redditor at Direct Relief, uh, as Alexis maybe, or nothing rather I should say, noted in uh, his earlier posts about Haiti. Uh, we actually went to uh, the University of Virginia together, uh, so we, we had known each other prior to uh, the founding of Reddit actually, and so I remember him kind of vaguely describing something that would uh, you know, involve news and the, the internet, but uh, hadn't at the time yet kind of conjured up what the, exactly that would be in my mind. Um, but uh, so I've been kind of involved in watching Reddit first uh, as just kind of a, a distant observer, uh, but now actually as a participator for uh, quite some time. Uh, number two, the uh, pallets, we don't really use that for, for building many things, uh, at least not right now. Uh, although if you have some interesting schematics, if you want to toss some ideas our way, maybe we can build something out in the parking lot. But I don't know. Uh, but number after three, the after the emergency, very clear. Uh, that we add that caveat. Uh, number three, um, what do you do? Uh, we need to know kind of what you're looking for if we were to consider hiring you. Uh, I don't know if we have any open positions at the moment, but I don't uh, know. if you go onto our website and go under About Us, uh, we have a listing. If we have any openings right now, I'm not sure. Often uh, people intern. Yeah, often people start out as interns and, and then work their way up. Uh, number seven, uh, Give It A Go asks, I heard someone being interviewed on NPR so that you shouldn't try to send supplies to Haiti as it likely won't reach and that you should give money to aid organizations instead. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, there's no question that the most efficient way for individuals to respond to this emergency is to donate cash to experienced disaster response organizations and those agencies that are working on the ground in Haiti, uh, mainly because there's a significant allocation problem that happens during emergencies that is best solved by people that have long-term experience and that are on the ground dealing with the everyday realities of how to respond to such a serious crisis. And the easiest way to do that is uh, for them to have cash resources um, to be able to, to uh, respond. That's, that's a brilliant answer, Andrew. You're welcome, Jim. Thank you. Um, number six here, uh, Lawler Skates asks, as an organization, where do you think you have done the most good what do you wish you had more money and assistance to help with, and why? And uh, and why? And why should we pick you over others? Um, good is a very squishy kind of term, uh, and we can define that uh, over many different variables, whether that's people served, or courses of treatment, 
so we won't try to quantify in this discussion what exactly good is, but you know there are a lot of things that we're very proud of, um, especially related to disaster response. And I think one of them would be, for instance, you know the the continued involvement down in uh, the Gulf with af the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita, uh, that which really actually springboarded our involvement not only in that st uh, in those areas in those states, but uh, provided the genesis for this kind of national uh, broad network of 1,100 clinics and community health centers that we work with now to supply with the same kind of urgently needed medications and other medical supplies that. Uh, we sent to international partners, uh, so that would be uh, one. And it's kind of an illustration of how we take a long-term approach to things. Uh, number five, uh, also I like beer, uh, me too, uh, asks, is it possible to see directly what the money has gone to, and if so, tell? And Andrew actually has a good answer for this. Yeah, we actually, I'm in the process of uh, developing a web mapping application that's going to be on our website, so you can look for it through directrelief.org. Uh, it's up in about a week uh, that's going to track all of the sites that we are donating uh, aid to in Haiti uh, will show exactly how much uh, cash and in-kind product support has gone to those sites uh, and will break down the donation by the material that has gone to that site as well so how much in prescription drugs over-the-counter medical equipment and supplies um, at each site because we're very interested, particularly under emergencies, in being as transparent as possible about where our aid is going. And do you have a, a launch date somewhere? Probably about seven days from now. Seven days? Um, okay. I, I think we're going to try to get something up on the site that's just a, a static form of the cash allocation uh, picture so that people can see that. Because mm -hmm. um, I know we just placed an order for a little over uh, $130,000 worth of procured medicines. Um, and there's some details about that right now on the Haiti page, but we want a more comprehensive list. Uh, and then the web application sounds amazing. Um, number four, uh, Frank Ichiro asks, what other organizations would you list as worthy of attention and donations? What organizations would you especially like to point out as trustworthy? And uh, one would be Partners in Health. Uh, I think everybody is aware of them if they've been following the news around Haiti. Uh, they're kind of functioning as the de facto Ministry of Health right now in the country. Uh, and they're doing fantastic work, and we've been working with them for uh, more than a decade. Uh, we also uh, would recommend a lot of long-term handicap groups, uh, like Handicap International and uh, Helping Hands for Haiti. In particular, with these kind of uh, very traumatic earthquakes, you see a lot of crush injuries, a lot of amputations. Uh, and that's going to be uh, something that folks live with for the rest of their lives. And it, it's a piece of what we're looking at in the long-term response. Uh, but there are also some great organizations that you know, I just listed that do fantastic work uh, for the handicapped uh, as, a, as a focus. Number three, uh, That's Not Jack asks, if we want to go to Haiti to assist in the rebuilding effort, which organization should we get in contact with, and what kind of time commitment does it take to make our trip worthwhile? And well, I mean, that really depends on what kind of skills you bring. I would say uh, the mo there, are, there are critically needed skills in the rebuilding effort. Our expertise is in uh, medical relief. Uh, so when we're advising people on going down in the medical field, professional medical volunteers have been uh, recruited through IMA World Health. Uh, in terms of other skills, um, I it, it's not really our ex area of expertise, so, uh, but I would, I would get in touch with other uh, aid organizations that are focusing on, on building uh, water and sanitation, those kinds of efforts, uh, as those agencies can probably direct you to uh, the most uh, relevant projects for your skills. Yeah, so it really depends on what you can do. Uh, as somebody, you know, if you have a medical uh, focus, then there can definitely be a use for you. Uh, if you don't have that kind of training or training in kind of rebuilding or uh, disaster kind of recovery uh, or even rubble clearing at this point, uh, it, it's, it's a little harder. Uh, number two, uh, Falfish asks, do you worry about the gradual drop in donations after the Haiti quake disappears from the news? Do you plan for this by saving any of the current donations so that there can be more money in later days? And uh, we are actually more concerned really with the allocation 
of existing resources than kind of the drop off uh, in funds that will come, you know, as things fade from the headlines. Uh, it's, it's vitally important. There's been a lot of resources raised for this emergency already um, that we, we know how they're used and that we know that they're used correctly. Uh, and that's something that direct relief we're going to really attempt to, to, to do is to make that process transparent and public uh, so that you all know, you know, when you donate, what did it do? Um, and so as Andrew described, kind of his mapping applications should be going live and, and what we've tried to do continuously every day on our website. That, uh, that that process is, is very clear for folks. Uh, and there will be a drop-off in donations. I mean, that much is clear. I mean, think these things happen. Um, but uh, there will you know, continue to be, I think, people who look long-term at this emergency and, and want to fund long-term projects. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, we, do, we don't have a set percentage or, or set amount of money that we decide, okay, this is set aside for long-term. This is question but, one. From yeah, Mr. Buckby. It kind of it kind of blends into to question number one, the top rated question uh, from M. Buckby, um, which asks, uh, or who asks, I should say, uh, what percentage of donations go to short term help like food and medicine versus longer term uh, like schools and rebuilding? Um, so that kind of flows from question two, and so we don't have kind of a, a set percentage uh, that gets set aside for long term, but generally, you know, we try to keep that. Uh, some kind of guide out there, uh, and there are we already have an eye to kind of the long-term projects that we do want to support in general. Uh, it's very similar to what we did after the 2005 Pakistan earthquake. Uh, we really want to focus on long-term medical care for those who uh, either lost a limb or you know lost function of some other body part, um, who need prosthetics and orthotics in order to uh, to remain mobile. Uh, that'll be one big focus of what we do. Um, but uh, we started spending funds, you know, the second that kind of these things happened. And we started spending before uh, an earthquake even happened because we've had, you know, 60, we've been in Haiti since 1962. Um, and uh, in the short term, at least, we haven't spent all that much money because it's been heavily subsidized by folks like FedEx uh, and other medical product donors who uh, have, in effect, just given us the, you know, the wherewithal there, the talent or their supplies uh, to be able to, in order to work with those things. And uh, so we'll take any clean shot in the short term uh, that has everything it needs except for the funds. Um, but, uh, you know, people aren't lacking for the lack of money. There's a, a real structural problem. There's an infrastructure problem. There's, uh, you know, there are questions about the rebuilding uh, that, uh, that need to be answered uh, before money just starts pumping in. So those are our top ten. Uh, we'd like to thank you guys. You had great questions. And uh, we replied actually to a few others in the thread. And if you want to check those out uh, as well, feel free. And we're always available here at directrelief.org. Uh, you can email us on our site or, you know, just give us a ring. I know that's very low tech, but uh, we do respond to the phones as well. So this is Jim. And Andrew. And uh, we're signing off. Thanks, Reddit.